So the eviction moratorium has ended. The forbearance for mortgages have ended. COVID unemployment benefits have ended. Is this going to be the end? Is this where the economy finally collapses? Well, let's talk about this in today's Financial Fridays video. I'm David. So let's just, just jump into what's going on. So many things are happening all kind of at the same time. The first is the eviction moratorium is ended. And what that is, is basically they made it pretty much illegal for you to, if you had a renter, that you couldn't kick them out and evict them. And that pretty much has been overturned. And now landlords can evict their tenants. And that was just to help people because people were going to be unemployed during COVID. They didn't know what else to do. They didn't have money. So a lot of people just didn't pay rent and you weren't allowed to evict your tenant because they couldn't pay rent. Um, yeah, kind of weird, even though they're getting unemployment benefits if you weren't working, whatever. So that has ended. So now you can evict tenants. Also, uh, mortgage forbearance. If you were on the opposite side where you own the home and or maybe you own the home and rented it out, you could get a forbearance from the bank or whoever you borrowed the money from and they couldn't basically foreclose your home on you. So that has ended. And then also around the country, I live in California, so we're a little later to this party, but also around the country, uh, there is an, if you were unemployed, not only did you get your normal unemployment, but you also got a special COVID unemployment, which was actually quite a bit. And that has ended, at least in California, it just ended on Monday. But I'm, other states have ended sooner, uh, but California just finally ended. And I know we're more on the Democratic liberal side, so they probably extend it more towards than like red states, things like that. So that has ended. And what does this all mean? Are, is everyone just now going to be homeless and, you know, every house is going to be back on the market, which has caused another crash like we had in 08 because now renters can't pay rent, so they're going to be homeless. And then the people that own the homes can't pay back the bank. So now the banks are going to take back the homes and throw them on the market. And all of a sudden, there's going to be a massive supply of homes. I don't think so. So let's jump into this. First, we got this pertains to California is the unemployment benefits have ended. It's ending all around uh, the country, so I don't know what state you live in, but you may or may not still have them. There is approximately 2.2 million Californians that are on the benefits that has ended. Okay, that's ending everywhere. So basically that means is you got extra money on top of your unemployment, and that has ended. I don't know what state you live in. Each state is different for that, but it's ended here. And I personally know people that were actually making more money from this COVID unemployment stuff than they were at their jobs. And now we go into the eviction moratorium. So this is ga basically giving the ability to kick your renters out that aren't paying rent. Three million households nationwide are at the risk of being evicted. And that is probably because they're not paying the rent. If you're paying your rent, why would you be evicted? So these people are probably not paying the rent. And if we look over here, let's look at the unemployment rate uh, to begin with. Right now, as you can see, this, this was back in 2013, we're at 11 million people unemployed. And it just slowly dropped, slowly dropped, slowly dropped, to do, 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 till it reached a bottom of 5.7 million people that were unemployed. Now I know there's, this number isn't, it wasn't like there's f almost 6 million people that are literally homeless and jobless and can't find work. Sometimes I know this has to do with the unemployment rate is like um, people that like choose not to work kind of thing. And I don't mean choose like, it's like, oh, I'm semi-retired or I don't need to work right now, right? Maybe I have built up money and I'm just living off the same. This, I know there's a, the number isn't exactly this, but then COVID hits, right? It goes straight up to 23 million, which is a little under 10% of America. Was America like 
330 population 328 million but not all these people are able to work you know you have 16 year olds can work but 10 year olds aren't going to work so it's quite a bit so probably of the working people it's probably close a little over 10 percent probably 12 or 13 percent and that obviously was when at the worst in april but then it quickly drops right and it's been slowly dropping ever since where we're down to 8.7 million people and that was the same as back in around end of 2014 we're at the same spot now here's the thing a lot of these people are choosing not to go back to work I uh, I was driving a lift the other day and I was like, why is Lyft so expensive? And they go, Lyft is based off, which is Uber. Uh, it's based off of how many drivers you have in the area. Depends on the price. And, it, and the guy was saying, there's a lot of people that don't even want to work. They don't even want to come back. And that is a very, I can't speak to wherever you guys live, but that is a very common theme all over here. You just drive on the road. Every single business, restaurant, fast food, doesn't matter what it is, has hiring signs. Every single place has hiring signs. There's currently 8.7 million people without work, right? The unemployment rate is about 5%. Look at this one. Jobs. There is 10.9 million jobs available. More jobs than there are people to fill them. And why aren't these people filling these jobs? I literally will go to like a fast food place and it'll be like starting at like $19 an hour. They want people that bad. Where they're, because here's the thing. You could, in California, you make your normal unemployment, which is whatever it is, but then you get your COVID, which is $600 a week is what it started out as. So you're making $2,400 a month just to do nothing plus your normal unemployment. I personally know people that were literally like, yeah, I'm making like double what I normally make just to sit at home. So yeah, a lot of people don't want to work and they're going to say, I don't want to work. I don't want to work uh, for whatever reason because they're making way more money sitting at home. I think it's since dropped to either three or $400 a week now. Um, and so it's less money. So that's probably why more and more people start going back to work because like, eh, it's just better to just go back to work. And the jobs are just offering ridiculous amounts of like, just so much stuff just for you to apply. They want you to go work there. So we have the jobs. The jobs are available, which is a good thing. So when I see all these people are going to get evicted, no. I, I think there will be some people that will. But I think majority of people, when you put, they obviously don't want to go back to work. They'd rather sit at home and do whatever, nothing. That's obviously. But a lot of these people will just go bite the bullet and go, okay, I'll go get a job. And they're just going to go back to work because there's lots of jobs available. And so I don't think they say 3 million people are estimated at risk of eviction. I think that is going to massively drop and not that many people are going to get evicted, I think, because people just need to be like, okay, it's time to go back to work. Um, there's plenty of you know jobs available for these people to work and like good paying jobs, like higher paying jobs, literally like fast food starting at $19 an hour when it was probably like before the pandemic, like what, 11, 12 bucks an hour just because they want people. And then it gets us to the next, the mortgage forbearance. This is for people that in the same position, didn't have a job, can't make the rent or their mortgage and the bank is going to give them forbearance. I looked into it when it first happened because I wanted to get on top of it just in case my business faltered, but it was really bad. It was like, We'll give you forbearance, but then at the end of it, you have to pay back all that forbearance. I'm like, so you're telling me if I have to, because at the time it's supposed to be like a, two weeks or a month or something like that, six weeks. I was like, if I took three months off and my mortgage is say $2,500, I would have to pay three months of $2,500 to $7,500 when my forbearance ends. They're like, yeah. I'm like, that's a terrible idea. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. Then I'll just have a massive bill at the end. I won't be able to make that. Thankfully, I never had to use it, but I think what will actually happen is because there's probably a lot of people in forbearance. Um, there's currently an estimated 1.6 million home buyers in forbearance, and it's steadily dropping. It fell to 3.6%. 
the month prior is 3.4, so it's slowly dropping, slowly dropping. Uh, we're in September now, it's probably at you know, close to 3%. What will end up happening with these people is they're not going to, the bank isn't gonna take 1.6 million homes and just throw them on the market. That will you know, just make everything worse. Uh, what they'll probably do is they'll do a loan modification for them or they'll do like payment options where you just add a little more onto each one of your payments. I'm sure they'll just work it out because this is extreme circumstances. Uh, I remember one of the big banks like Bank of America or something like that was just going to say that they would just tack it on the end of the loan. So let's say you had, you know, 15 years left of your mortgage and you didn't work for like a year, didn't pay your mortgage for a year. You're not going to have to pay a year's lump sum all of a sudden. No, they just, now you're at 15 years, now you're at 16 years. So there's talks of that and they probably, you know, maybe make a charge or something like that, but be very minimal, the charge that they would give you for doing that, that when you spread it all out, it'd be like an extra 50 bucks a month or something like that. Uh, so yeah, that's probably what they'll do. They won't actually just you know, screw the, all these people over because it's not in their benefit. That's the thing. It's not in their benefit just to put all these homes on the market because what will happen is if you put 1.6 million homes on the market and everyone's house, because homes are supply and demand, all of a sudden there's a lot of supply up there, that will just drop the market, which then it will cause people to be like, I'm underwater in my house. I might, I might as well walk away. So then they'll throw their, just leave their house, put theirs on the market and then everything else go down, and then the banks will end up getting less money in the end when they're playing the long game anyways. They li corporations live a lot longer than humans. So that's, what that, that's probably what will happen. So I don't think these 1.6 million homeowners will, you know, and just because you're on the forbearance program doesn't mean you actually need it. Like I said, I could have done it, but I didn't want to. Um, so these people, I'm, most of these homes, I'm sure, will stay with the homeowners. Uh, yeah, but here's the thing. So let's say some of these, these evictions actually do take place and there's homes now available. Rents are sky high right now. So there's people really trying to find homes. And what will happen is these homes that where people get evicted will probably be rented out I don't think it'll affect it that much. I don't think homes that, you know, people end up actually getting, you know, these 1.6 million homeowners, if a lot of them do come on the market, I don't think it's going to drop the market. Right now, we're kind of in a softening, not softening, but like, just kind of like this kind of market where everything's just, things are still selling, but they're not as crazy as they were a few months ago. They're still selling, but you don't have like multiple, multiple offers going for like hundreds of thousands of dollars over asking. And the reason why is because there's still, we still have a massive supply issue. There's not that many homes being built, right? New construction is down. It's dropped 13% in April compared to March, and it just keeps on going down and down and down. And yeah, the reason why it's going down is there's a short supply of building materials like lumber, steel, copper, all that stuff, short supply. And the reason why there's a short supply is because all these people aren't working. So imagine you, okay, it's like, yeah, you're thinking, okay, the people that aren't working are the lower end people. Okay, that's fine. But what if it's the person that loads the trucks, right? Loads the lumber or does something that's kind of a smaller job at the lumber mill. Well, now they don't have those employees. So who does that? Okay, well, now you have to raise the price so you can find people to actually do it. What if you can't find anybody? Well, now production goes really slow. So then it's getting the materials itself. Or it's just like this little job, driving here and there, just the delivery person, the person that all this kind of thing. You have so many little people all over the place doing all these little jobs, and it adds up if you don't have them. It slows everything down. So that means businesses can't get the lumber, which means they have to raise the prices of their current lumber to, like, slow down. They can't get rid of it at what it is because then the lumber mills are charging more just to get it out, all this kind of stuff. So that's why prices everywhere has been raised. You know, let's see, lumber prices up. Um, 
Okay, look at this. It used to be in April 2020, 350 dollars per thousand board feet. It shot up to 1500. That's about four and a half, five times roughly that lumber went up. Imagine trying to build a house with that. And that's all your stuff. Everything is going up, like steel, copper, all that stuff. So new construction is massively down. So what does that mean? It means that you can't build new homes. There's not enough new homes. So that means that keeps the supply down. Remember, everything's supply and demand. So no new homes coming on the market. So that means the only homes you could possibly get are the old homes. That's why prices are so crazy right now is because it's like when I look for a home, there's literally, I live in San Diego and in my price range, there'd be like maybe five homes listed a week in my price range. And I'm in a like the average price range. Think about it. In like the area I was looking, five homes a week. So I literally every week I'd pull up Zillow or Redfin or whatever it is, and I'd have a choice between five homes. And I'm like, yeah, none that week. I don't want to think about it. San Diego, five homes in the areas I was looking in. So yeah, it's it's just crazy. So I don't think that's I don't think this. I think most of this is just people not wanting to go back to work. That's why you have all these jobs opening. And what will end up happening is people will go back to work because they'll have to. It's better than being homeless. Sure, there's going to be some people that are evicted. Sure, there's going to be some people that lose their homes. But I don't think it's going to be enough to actually make much of a difference. Like there's going to be no crash and all that kind of stuff. I think people will just have to bite the bullet, go back to work. I think most people will be fine. Like I said, if you look at the unemployment, it's dropping, 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 dropping. And it'll probably continue to drop more and more and more once people like California just ended their their uh, state aid. More states do that. It'll just continue. And then we'll go back to pretty much normal. And that's what it is. People are resisting the going back to normal, but it's time to go back to normal. So, yes. But like I said, I don't know. Let me know how it is over where you guys are. Wherever you are, let me know your state and when you drive around, is there literally job openings at every possible place? And where they're putting like big signs saying we have interviews every Tuesday or every Wednesday, once a week, once a month, whatever it is. I've seen places where they're offering you gift cards just to come in and interview and apply. And it's just, it's just crazy. So let me know what you think of all this. Do you think there's going to be a massive crash? Do you think I'm completely wrong? Do you think there will be a housing crash and, you know, much more inventory coming on, all that stuff? And again, it takes a while. So even if they did the eviction process, it takes months to do that, at least in California. And same with the foreclosures of the homes. It's not like day one, the bank's like, you're foreclosed and boom, you're out on the street. No, it takes a while. So it would be a very trickle of homes and stuff coming up. Uh, but yeah, let me know your thoughts and have a good weekend.